Hey guys, this is Jim, WT1W, and you're watching FEP Labs Radio. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. So today I want to share with you something that I got from the good people at Helltech. Full disclosure, this was sent to me by the people at Helltech for a review on this channel. However, my opinions are my own, and they do not have approval of the video prior to release, nor will they suggest any edits to it. This is a mesh pocket power bank. And this is a unique device. Um, if you've ever looked at MeshTastic, MeshTastic is a function that lets you create an off-grid network with multiple nodes of MeshTastic devices. And there are a ton of MeshTastic devices. They range from small enough to stick in your pocket to, you know, something that's uh, maybe the size of an HT. This device is somewhere in the middle. You can absolutely stick this in your pocket, but what makes this so unique is that this is a MeshTastic node device as well as a power bank. And you can see right here on the front, we have USB-C charging, we have magnetic charging, and it is MeshTastic compatible. And if we look at the back, we get the actual specs of the device. And this is a 5,000, this is a particular one, is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. It will charge, of course, our circuit range. Uh, type C input is nine volts, 2.2 amps, five volts, three amps. What it's made of, wireless charging output, five watts, seven and a half watts, 10 watts, 15 watts. So this will like charge something, obviously your phone, but even an iPad, for example. Or if you have an HT that uses USB-C type charging, you can charge it off of this. You can charge with a cable or you can charge with uh, Qi 2 compatible charging, QI2. I think it's pronounced Qi. So this is what the box looks like. And I've already opened this and we'll get to that in a second. The device comes nicely packed in this little, this little case with a small USB-C cable, a manual, and of course the device. Let's jump over and take a look at the device. It also comes with this beautiful little pouch to store the device in. So you could put this in a laptop bag, for example, without worrying about it getting scratched up. Here's the USB-C cable it comes with. And then of course, here is our device. So this is what the device looks like. Now it comes with two cables and you can see here, one of them is standard USB-C and this one is this little magnetic four pin style. And this is a data cable. This is only used for power. This is a data cable that you would use to do programming uh, off of a PC, for example, to this device. Of course, you can also do some programming over Bluetooth after you have it connected to your phone. So that is what comes with the device itself. Let's take a quick look at the manual. And again, it gives us our specs, um, what the different lights mean and there. Well, we'll look at that in a second. Um, the button descriptions, the names of the buttons and what their functions are. And, and some of them are single click, double click and a long press. Um, and then there is a reset, a sleep device on long press and a display switching and a wake up button and then different power options there to turn on and off the charging. As a matter of fact, then this shows us what the device has on it. The uh, firmware upgrade interface, of course, that's the one that uses this little magnetic cable. Uh, power control. Here's our magnetic wireless charging area with a lower antenna. That's this little bump out right here. And then our other two buttons, user and reset. If we look at the back, all you have to do to charge your device is to lay it on the back of the thing. Um, you also have to turn this on to, to enable wireless charging. The uh, wired charging can happen through a USB-C cable here. And you just plug it in and it will charge. And of course, the MeshTastic device itself is always using power. And this is one of the things that's so cool about this particular device. On other MeshTastic devices, they have small lithium polymer batteries. Um, typically about the size of a quarter or a little bigger, maybe two quarters, uh, about an inch and a half by an inch wide and long. 
but this will run off of this 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So even if I use this for nothing but mesh-tastic, this thing will stay lit up as a mesh-tastic node or repeater, however you configure it, for days, which is pretty awesome. Now, this isn't as light as some other mesh-tastic devices I've seen, but that's the penalty for having a battery pack in it and being able to use it to recharge your phone or other mobile devices, either with a wire or magnetically. So that is pretty cool. All right, I'm going to zoom the camera in. We'll turn this thing on and take a look at the menus and what the Meshtastic screen shows us. Stick with me. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the functions in the device. Now, one thing I noticed is they call these buttons power, and that clearly says control there. Then we also have user and reset over here. User lets us do some of the other controls, and I'm pretty sure that control is the same as the power on that they talked about. So, let's do this. Let's turn this thing on, and that should be a single click of the button. Okay, with the control button pressed a single time, and this doesn't show up well on camera, we should be able to charge now. So we're charging. And you can see the magnet is on there pretty well. And we have a green, there it is, our green solid light. Oh, yeah, and the phone. Yeah, it's hard to see, but we have the little lightning bolt there. This is an iPhone, and we are charging. If you look there in the corner, let me see if I can get a better view. There we go. That's green, and there's the uh, little lightning bolt icon. So we're actually charging at this point. All right, you can see the Meshtastic node is connected. Now, I, I'm in a metal building right now, and I also live out in the boonies, so there are no nodes turned on anywhere near me. I have one on in my house, but that's about 50 or 60 yards away, so it's not, uh, it's not picking that up. But this does all the things. It shows our node, what the model is. This is the Heltec Mesh Pocket node number. So this is not ambient to me this is the data source for my location and if we look at the map you can see there's my house right there in the center and then of course we can go into settings and do all the associated uh, things that you would do with a meshtastic or LoRa node United States what uh, what mode we're on I'm going to actually change this to long moderate when I save this this will cause a reboot and you can see we disconnected and the device is rebooting. And it looks like it connected back automatically. And it has. And once again, there's our device. Now, since I changed from long fast to long moderate, I'm getting better range. And I'm apparently hearing another node out here. So if I go to messages. Yeah, it found my, it found my node in the house. Which is pretty impressive because... Metal building, brick house, about 50 yards that way. So that's pretty good. I'm liking that. I left the note on in the house just for this purpose. And again, I'm using long moderate on both this device and the one in the house. So of course you have your channels and I can send messages back and forth to my device. But since I'd be talking to myself, that seems a little crazy. This is one of my contacts. And of course I could send a message there and it would show up on my other device. 1A3F, and let me see, I went to the wrong screen, and it shows 1A3F, which is my other node. So that's great. And that's a whole nother video probably, but one of the things that I've discovered is that a lot of people don't understand what the different modes are for these devices. And it's worth spending some time to fiddle with these and decide what you're trying to do with it. So you can make these a repeater, obviously. Both of mine are in client mode, and so they're seeing each other, and they're able to exchange data back and forth. The basic trade-off, and I'm not going to get into long fast, long moderate, short fast, all that stuff. The basic trade-off with all of these is data speed versus bandwidth and range kind of situation. 
and those three things all interplay with each other and that's not particular to the Helltech device that is mesh tastic every mesh tastic device has those options and those options all work essentially the same way on every mesh tastic device so uh, this is me here and then that is what I'm getting from the house and it didn't show up with long fast because the house is on long moderate but once I changed it to the same communications mode or protocol however you want to call that then I was able to see it and I can click that and I can see that that other node I have is a rack wisp block and it's sitting in my dining room right now so this will show all the nodes that I'm currently connected to as well as my own it works like any other mesh tastic device the difference is with this device it's also a battery pack I think the concept is excellent on this and the screen is e-ink if you haven't noticed, that screen is very readable, even in the camera with the studio lights on here, I'm trying to get it out of all the glare. And we're looking at it at an angle here, and it's still very readable. So that's Swank. And of course, I'm charging my phone at the same time. So you can see here we're getting, we're getting juice while we're, while we're using our Meshtastic device. This shows our battery level here which is at 70%, but we are still charging. We're up to 82% uh, while I have Meshtastic running. And I will tell you, if you didn't know this, the Meshtastic app itself uses a fair amount of battery because it's initiating the GPS in my phone as well as the app itself running and radioing Bluetooth all the time with the Meshtastic node that's local to it. Obviously, I'm not Bluetooth to the node in the house, but I'm Bluetooth to this node here. So that radio is constantly sending data. And then the app itself is up and talking to the Meshtastic device as well. So this uses even more data. That is the Helltech device. This is the Mesh Pocket from Helltech. And I like the device. I think it's a great concept. If you're going to carry a Meshtastic node with you, right? Then why not carry one that has a battery pack for emergency power for your phone? Okay, so the device also has some options we can look at. If we long press the user button here, that brings up an optional menu. This shows us our battery voltage, uh, our charge percent and our duty percent. From here, we can send messages, we can go into options, we can shut, save and shut down the node, and we can obviously pop back out. I wanted to share the options. So we can set applets that run on the device. So DMs will show up in a separate cycle of the screen, channel zero, channel one, positions, recents list, uh, nodes heard, and of course we get out by long pressing again. And that's how we select anything in this device. And we can change the rotation, the duration that it keeps recents on there, the layout, notifications, a battery icon. We can change the clock from 24 hour to 12 hour. And of course, get out of it. And if a single press just rotates us through those options. So you can spend some time fixing the screen however you'd like it. And of course, we can send from here a ping and generate a, a ranging ping kind of deal. Exit, long press to get back into it, save and shut down the node, and exit. So, pretty cool. Easy enough to do some basic configuration from the controls on the device itself. The, one of the big selling points with Meshtastic is that it's an off-grid communications tool and that is true you have to have something for the node to talk to I can't really type messages on a screen that doesn't have a keyboard I mean there are literally three buttons on this device so you have to have a cell phone the cell phone doesn't have to have cell service it just has to have Bluetooth to be able to talk to the Meshtastic device itself so the beauty of that is, is that anybody else who has a Meshtastic device, be it a Helltech one or some other variety, with nothing but an un, a no-service cell phone, 
in this device, we can have comms between each other because you would use the app to do the messaging with. So, guys, that is all I'm going to have in this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you would, give me a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and ring the bell. All that stuff is in the dingus below. There is a link to this also in the dingus below. That will be an affiliate link. It doesn't cost you any more to click that link, but it does help out the channel because it tells the good people at Helltech that you saw this video and you're interested in this thing. Guys, thank you very much. Have a good day. 73.